Amen? With the title of the message and the Word of God and that price that we would give. Amen? And what would we set for what God has done to be a part of His kingdom is priceless. Amen? Priceless. Amen? Priceless. Let's pray and ask the Lord to speak to us through His Word. Thank you, Savior, for your Word. Thank you, Lord, for the service, the spirit of worship, and praise, and thanksgiving. Minister, Lord, right now, God, as you challenge us again through your word, to do more, to give more, to work harder, to be a part of your business, we pray in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Savior. You may be seated. Oscar Wilde said, a cynic knows the price of everything and the value of nothing. And we are often so busy counting the costs that we don't pay the price. The theme in the scriptures is uh, value versus investment. Amen. What something is worth versus what we give for it. And this is a New Testament theme that Jesus spoke of many times and was also a, a very serious concern for the disciples. They asked Jesus uh, about this price they were paying, the sacrifices they had made, and would it really be worth it in the end. And Jesus himself compared price versus worth when he talked about the kingdom of heaven. And he said, a man found a treasure hidden in a field, and when he found it, he hid, hid the treasure, and for the joy thereof, understanding the value, the worth, he sold, he sold all that he had and bought that field. What we are a part of is priceless. He said, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a merchant man who was seeking a goodly pearl or a valuable pearl. Pearl. And when he found that one pearl of great price, he sold all that he had and bought it. He also said, what if a man would gain the whole world and lose his soul? Which is more valuable? Gaining the whole world, the gross domestic product, or the world gross domestic product of uh, multiplied billions of dollars, or having his soul? So Jesus compared the worth of one soul to the value of the world. Amen? We understand that Jesus was saying it is priceless. When you see advertising, you think many times of the need for a product. You think of the vanity of having the new clothes. Or the need to have the latest electronics. I need an iPad. As some tell me, you know, what are you doing with those notes? You know, that's, that's outdated. You need an iPad. And you want something. Or they will tell you, you deserve it. Amen? You deserve a product. You want it. You need it. Uh, you have to have it. To look good. To keep up. Vanity is a reason why we buy certain things because we want to fit in and look right according to the styles that are current. And uh, so these are advertising things that, that get us to buy something. But in 1997, MasterCard came up with an advertising campaign based on worth. Revolutionized the, the, the advertising industry at that time. They were a distant second to Visa. And so they came up with this advertising campaign, and one of their first ads was this. There was a, uh, a person or a family getting ready for their, the birth of their child, and they talked about what they had to buy. A stroller, $100. A car seat, $50. Blankets, clothing, bibs, and toys, $250. Seeing your beautiful child for the first time, priceless. There are some things money can't buy. For everything else, there's MasterCard. 
So here you see the advertising campaign is not based on desires. It's not based on vanity. It's not based on what you need. It's based on what the value and the worth is of seeing that precious child for the first time. The investment and the sacrifice and the life-changing experience it is to bring children into the world, none of that is really what we look at as far as costs. We look at the value of what we have given our child. The opportunities we've given them. The opportunities they will have in the future. Uh, parents will say, we want you to have a better life than we had. Better opportunities than we had. We did without certain things, but we don't want you to have to do without. It's worth everything we have to give or sacrifice or invest to see our children raised the right way. We don't count the cost when we give to our children. Amen? How do you spell love? T-I-M-E. Amen? Yeah. I began to see my children grow up and I remember the times they would say, Daddy, will you sit down and play a game with me? No, not right now, lady. Daddy, will you come out and play with me? Not right now, lady. I'm too busy. Amen? Then I began to realize as the weeks passed and the months passed and the years passed how little time I had spent with my boys. It'll wake you up when you understand that sometimes we look at what things cost or the time it's going to take, but we're not looking at the worth of the investment. Amen. The value of what we're giving to. The value of what we are investing in. Amen. And when we understand the value of a life, of a soul, of a relationship, we realize the things that we have to pay and the sacrifices that we must make, the worth and the value of that is priceless.
He was betrayed for the price of a slave. But he liberated all of humanity. Priceless. His back was laid bare by the Roman soldiers with a whip and his, his uh, muscles and, and, and flesh was exposed and laid bare. But by his stripes we are healed. Priceless. You focus on the horrific sacrifice and the act. Hadn't done 
enough. Who, who can be saved? And Jesus said, with all, with God, all things are possible. Amen. Amen. But then it's impossible to understand this, but with God, all things are possible. And he said, we have uh, forsaken all to follow you. And he told them, every one of you that have forsaken houses, or brethren, or sisters, or father, or mother, or wife, or children, or lands for my name's sake, shall receive a hundredfold, and shall inherit everlasting life. Again, he placed the word and value on the kingdom, on eternal life. He said, it's worth everything you've ever had to give. I always go back to when I left the Bible school, came here to Houston. My dad took off uh, his lunch, used his lunch break to come back to the house. My car was packed to the roof with my clothes and what little bit I had. And we were uh, ready to get on the road. And he came back and we sat there and just cried and wept and said goodbye. And, and uh, he kept saying, he said, son, he said, you're dying. You're dying. It's like you're dying, son. He said, you're going to leave me. 18, he said, 18 years. What is 18 years? Nothing. I, I, I haven't had you any time. It was, it was, it was just destroyed. No time. It's not enough time. He said, now you're gone. You're just gone. You're gone. You're gone. You want to be gone. He was sitting there just stared at me. Tearing me up. I didn't understand what he was feeling, unfortunately. I was sad about leaving, perhaps because of missing the meals and, and all the things that they did for me. I, that's probably about the level I was thinking on at that moment. But he, he was seeing it. He was letting go. He, he knew. He said, you're never going to come back. <laughs> he was right there. I remember the first summer that I stayed and helped with a, a Spanish church here in Houston. Helped with the youth that summer. And I worked... And uh, trying to explain that to them, it, it was, it was, it wasn't working. He said, "You get a job here in Jacksonville, and uh, I'm sure you can work with some Spanish here in Jacksonville." And at that time, they had a small Spanish ministry in my home church. I mean, he had it all planned out. Why are you going to stay there in Houston? I had another reason besides the job of working with Spanish church. Sophia had come back. Sophia, Sophia was, was here in Houston. That, that, was, that was priceless. Amen. My father in law beat me to it. It was priceless. But the job and working with, in the Spanish ministry with that youth group was also worth it. I had other motives, I have to admit. I said, Dad, I, I, I just feel like this is what's right. Son, you said you were coming back home for the summer. So then I tell him, as I graduate, and I talked about going back to Jacksonville, he said, uh, son, what are you going to do? I said, well, Dad, I've been you know, trying to find the right moment, but uh, I'm going to Panama for the summer. That's all I heard. <laughs> You need to come back home for a while. And so here began the struggle of letting go again. After three years, again, we were at that same point of trying to reason and figure out what I was giving and the price I was going to pay and, and what I was expecting out of the future and out of my ministry. And, and was God really in it? God really calling and really leading? Was it really worth it to pay? adjustments in my life that I was making. And, and uh, he said, there were Spanish people in Florida. The first largest Spanish-speaking country is Mexico. The second is Spain. And the third is the United States. <laughs> he said, come back to Florida. And, and there's some Spanish people here in Florida. So we went on back and forth. And then we went to just to be a volunteer in a short term and then come back and do something else, supposedly. And so they were going to apply for a appointment six and a half years later after leaving for Bible school. 
Again, the struggle. Are you coming? Are you, are you going to come back? Or are you sure this is what you're supposed to do? And, and we made that hurdle and, and, and went on and, and in our ministry. And then Sophia was pregnant with Jonathan. And this is where he got upset the second time for real. I don't know why you're going to have a grandchild because I'll never be able to see him anyway. Never. I'll never see him. You're going to have that baby. I'll never see him. So here we are again talking. Dad, I think this is God's will. Maybe you'll come to Panama now and visit us. <laughs> Over six years in Panama, they never visited us. But here's the beautiful part. After all these years of moving forward and letting go, and I remember my mom telling me, whatever you do in life, whatever you choose to do, if you choose to be a lawyer or a doctor or, or in computer science or whatever you think you need to do, if you do choose to be in the kingdom of God and work for God and God
and uh, they tell us we're coming to Panama. <laughs> that was my priceless moment. I thought, finally, finally. But their priceless moment was when they finally got there and never really seen other than in pictures and, and hearing about what we were doing, but being there on site. And seeing their eyes open wide as they saw the country and saw the church and saw the people and saw the service and the worship and, and saw us dealing with the families and went to homes and visited some of the saints and they realized to them, I saw in their face that priceless moment. It was worth it. We had to let go. We had to give up. We had to let Underneath 
our beds. It is a black hole of boxes and shoes and things that are forever lost and stored underneath our beds. Nobody wants to go underneath the bed. You'll clean your whole house and you won't move the bed. But I tell you, if I said I, there's a twenty dollar bill up underneath that bed, twenty dollars, maybe ten, we'd be down on our knees, we'd get up under there, and we'd pull out the cobwebs, we'd pull out the shoes and the clothes, we'd crawl around underneath that bed to find that money.
And Jesus is saying, go, seek, find, bring back that which is lost. Recover it. Amen. That's the value of the kingdom of God. Everything, no matter how long, no matter what it costs, whatever it takes, we answer the scripture, we answer God's question today. And we look at him and we say, absolutely, priceless. Can't even put an amount on that. It doesn't matter what it costs. I'm going to give it. I'll go. I'll sell all that I have. All that I have. I was meditating a lot recently about the spot that was chosen for Solomon's temple, the most beautiful and precious temple that was ever built by God's people. In today's terms, it would be priceless if you put a value on the worth of even the materials that were used. And when David bought that threshing floor from Ornan, Ornan said, I give it all. If it's for God's purpose, if it's to sacrifice for God, he said, I give it all. Of course, David said, I can't take something that I have to pay a price for. I want to say that later, Orion saw Solomon's temple, probably thought, you know what? That was my threshing floor. That was mine. He didn't know all that was going to happen. He didn't know later that beautiful place of worship was going to be built there. But his spirit and what motivated him was the value and the worth of allowing God to use that precious floor. No matter how precious it would have been, if it was an inheritance or a part of his family or even his livelihood, he said, you know, take it. If it's for God, take it. I give it all. I give it all. That's what resounds through the New Testament as Jesus said, I want you to think about value versus price, worth versus the investment and the cost and understand that it is priceless. I give it all. I give it all. I give it all. And every time what comes back, what God does is absolutely priceless. Absolutely priceless. The greatest moment is to see that soul repenting, speaking in other tongues, full of joy, full of worship, full of thanksgiving, a life restored, a life renewed, a life transformed under the power of the Holy Ghost. And, and whatever, if you've been serving God 15 or 20 years or one year, and you think whatever it's taken, whatever I've given, whatever I've forsaken, right now it's worth everything to see this one life changed. One life. The word of God stands true on the worth and the value of the soul. It's priceless. Priceless. Let's worship the Lord this morning. Let's thank Him for His word. Is there a price that you've been asked to pay? Is there a cost that you're considering? Is there an investment or sacrifice that you've already given or made for the kingdom of God? This is worth it. You're worth it. Your family's worth it. Your children are worth it. For joy that was set before him, he endured the cross.
drop of blood that he shed on the cross. It's priceless. 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 All we can do today is give him our hearts and our souls and obey his voice. His presence is here right now. I feel it right deep in my heart. Oh, please. Come on, let's respond.